Hello, and welcome to a video lesson about introductions. So before we begin, it's always good to ask yourself why, because connecting to the purpose will make you better at doing the job if you know why you're doing it. So three purposes, three jobs of an introduction. It does three jobs. First, it engages the audience and gets them to keep reading or watching. An introduction, it can also give them some background information on the topic. And the other job is to preview or hint at what you will be talking about so they know what's coming and they're ready. It's a preparation. Introductions get your audience ready. So intros have three main components, and this applies to presentations, essays, arguments, anything where you're introducing something, either informational or argumentative, is going to follow this same pattern. So I think about this when I do a lot of kinds of things. Even when I do back to school night with parents, I think about an introduction. So there's three parts of an intro, and you might recognize these because they were related to the three jobs an intro does. First, you have to hook. Then you have the background. Then you have the preview. So let's talk about a little bit more of what that means. The hook is to grab the reader, to get them engaged. That was our first job in the introduction. Come here. Listen to this. Read this. Second, background. You want to give your audience some brief background info on the topic. Maybe they didn't know a lot. Maybe they knew something, but you want to wake, wake it up in their brain. And finally, you want to preview what your specific presentation or piece of writing is going to talk about so they know what's coming. So let's talk first about the hook. There's a fish hook image there. That's what we think about. Your audience, your reader is a fish. And you want to grab them. And you can do this in a couple different ways. There's more than this, but this is a good starting point. You could ask a question, tell a story, a personal story, or a story from a, a famous person, or a story from somebody who lived through something. You could give a fact or statistic, especially if it's surprising. Um, that might wake up the, a reader or the audience, make them think, I didn't know that. Wait, tell me more. Or finally, you could share a common experience, belief, or custom. Something that everybody, that your audience might be able to relate to. And then when they connect, they think, oh yeah, I want to know more what you're going to say because I'm, I can relate to this. So let me give you some examples. And these were all for my topic of roller skating that I considered. And I seriously considered all of these. Uh, and then you'll see which one I chose. Ask a question. Are you looking for a fun, free, socially distanced outdoor activity? Tell a story, personal or not. My daughter asked me to buy her skates last year because a friend had them and was taking after school skating lessons. So story from real true story. Next, a factor statistic. Shoes with wheels on them have been around for almost 300 years. Isn't that cool? Surprising. You wouldn't think they were that old. 1760. Uh, then we have a shared common experience, belief, or custom, it should say. Sorry, I wrote experience twice. We are all struggling with social distancing. We've lost parks and team sports, and many of us are going crazy stuck inside. Can you relate to that? So now you're leaning forward going, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that. Tell me more. What are you going to say? So these are four ways to hook the reader and get them engaged. After writing these, I thought to myself, well, which one do I like the best? And I decided a personal story was how I wanted to go. Um, well, you'll see. Sorry, I'm giving you a little hint about where we're going. Okay, so there's my, there's some hook examples. Next, we have the background section, okay? That is a two to three sentence of summary on your topic, of your topic, right? Some background information that maybe they need to know. Um, it's not too long. Don't give away anything major that you then talk about in your presentation because they don't won't want to hear it twice. They'll be like, you already said that. And then assume the audience doesn't know a lot about your topic. What do they need to know at least to get started in your presentation? Okay. Um, for example, if your topic was hieroglyphics, you might want to define what hieroglyphics are just in case someone's like, hiero what? And then you're like, oh, it's the Egyptian writing. Oh yeah. Okay. I kind of know about that. Okay. And then finally, the third part of the introduction is the preview. Remember we have hook background preview. That is where you tell your audience what can they can expect to learn or hear about in your presentation. Hint, look at your subtopics. Give a little preview of each one. Okay? So let's take a look at my sample intro. Okay? I'm going to make me smaller. Move me over there. Um, and remember, it is helpful at this point to have your outline handy. Let me um, show you my outline really quick. Just notice my subtopics. Okay, invention and technology, 
evolution of skating as a sport and a hobby and skating during COVID-19. Okay. Uh, okay. So here we go. Here's my intro. And then I'm going to break it down for you. But look how you may not even have noticed. But see if when I'm reading, you can notice the parts I talked about. My daughter had been asking for roller skates for months. Her friend had roller skates and joined a roller skating after school club. After months of being stuck indoors during the COVID pandemic, I decided I would get her skates and a pair for me as well. I used to roller skate in elementary school and I loved it. Weirdly, when I looked on Amazon, I couldn't find any roller skates. I looked to buy directly from skate manufacturers. Sold out. Every pair. It turns out I didn't have an original idea. I was part of a pandemic trend of roller skating fueled by viral Instagram and TikTok videos. When most people think of roller skates, they think of the 1970s or 80s with people gliding around a rink to disco tunes. The 90s brought the rise of rollerblades. While wheeled shoes date back to the 1760s, roller skates as we think of them today with the two wheels in front and two in back were invented in 1863. Today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the nearly 300-year history and technological developments in skating, all the cool things people do on skates, and how the pandemic has brought on a roller skating renaissance. Come roll with me. Okay, so did you notice? Let's remember our three parts. Hook, background, preview. First, we have my hook, my personal story. I talked about my daughter wanting skates. I tried to buy her skates. Sold out. Shock. Okay. Next, we have background. Roller skating is a current trend. When it was invented, what we all think of often with roller skates is like the 80s, but they're coming back now, but they're actually quite old. Very cool. That's my background, just in case someone didn't know what roller skates were. Maybe I have an audience member who has only ever seen rollerblades. Maybe when I say roller skates, they weren't sure what I meant. Right? Did I also mean rollerblades? I didn't, even though I did mention that rollerblades um, came in the 890s. And then finally, my preview. My subtopics were invention in history, the development of it as today, and the sports people play with it. And then finally, how it's become really popular during the COVID pandemic. Okay? So here we go. There we go. Do you see that? We had hook, background, preview. Get interested. Here's a little summary of the background just so you know what you're getting into. And here's what I'm going to tell you about today. I'm not going to tell you how to be really fast on skates. I'm not going to tell you how to do tricks. I'm focusing on these things so that if you are looking for something else, you know this video isn't for you. Okay? Um, sorry. <laughs> That's my next lesson. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. Um, the big takeaways, if you can remember this, these three things. Hook background, preview. If you can remember those three things, you will always make an intro that works. Okay. Happy writing. Happy revising.